Welcome to the main course with me, Natalie Rock. Growing up in a small town in Minnesota, the only exciting cuisine was that of our state fair. Now that I'm in Maine, I am so excited to meet all the talented chefs that create such delicious and unique food. Come with me as I explore Maine and all the different foods it has to offer. Welcome to the main course with me, Natalie. We're here at Opera today in this beautiful building they have with Ryan and Sarah. How are you guys doing today? Great. So great, thanks. <laughs> I was wondering if we could just start off by asking how you guys came to be. You guys have this beautiful, gorgeous area. You know, how, did, how long have you been here? How did it start? My business partner, Mike, and I are, I'll call it ski buddies. And uh, over the years, had some conversations on the chairlift. He's not a big beer person, uh, I am, and have another business that's related to beer. Uh, so he sort of complained that there's not enough cider in Maine for <laughs> quite a while. And we always had this long running joke of let's start a cider place. Um, in the meantime, his family actually bought this building and they were looking to find a tenant for it. He thought a brewery would be an excellent fit. So we kind of tossed around who might come in, who would fit. Uh, then COVID happened and our chairlift conversation got a little more serious to be, hey, why don't we do something? So from that turned into the real idea of let's do a business model around um, not just cider, but hard seltzer was added as well. Uh, so we did it and we opened last July, uh, a little later than anticipated, but uh, opened I think July 10th or so and have been going at it since. Dang, that sounds great though. I love when those casual conversations can turn into something like this. Um, so could you tell me a little bit about the process of making your seltzers and your brews and everything? Is everything here done in-house? Or do you guys send it off, ship it in? What's the deal with that? So I can take this one. So we are technically a distillery and a winery. Oh. We have a bifurcated process. We ferment our hard cider in-house. Um, similar process to beer. Uh, we take raw apple, um, musk they call it, and then we add yeast in over the period of weeks and months. It ferments naturally on its own with a little bit of help, and it turns into hard cider. Seltzer, because we are a distillery, we make it in a fundamentally different way than almost everybody else. Seltzer is often fermented sugar product. Um, we're using real alcohol, real fruit, and it winds up being a really clean, really natural, really beautiful end result. Anything you want to add? I think that's good. <laughs> and yes, it is all made in this building behind the wall over there. Okay, wow, very interesting. And where do those inspirations for all the flavors, I mean, you have that fridge stocked full. I was trying to read all the ones and I was just wondering if you guys thought of all those or if you guys take your inspiration from somewhere else. It's pretty collaborative. It's super collaborative. We have a really talented head of production who um, also comes from beer. Um, and I think for us, it's kind of like an exploratory process in food science. So. I mean, we take inspiration from everything. We really try to hone in our releases to seasonality using fresh ingredients when they're at their best um, and really try to release products when they are the most impactful. You know, so fall flavors in fall and, you know, beautiful summer fruits in summer. Um, some of it is, is inspired by classics. Right now we just released a product called Rainier, which is a tart cherry and lime hard seltzer. Mm -hmm. um, cherry and lime is a classic combo. It's super delicious. It's not one of our more like wild or necessarily creative flavors, but it's a pairing that is timeless. Um, and then, you know, conversely, uh, sometimes we get really experimental, and one of my favorites is a product called Tangelo, which is a tangerine grapefruit hybrid made with pink peppercorns, which oh, wow. sounds wild, <laughs> but it is so good. I've never heard of pink peppercorns. Oh, <laughs> I'll have to try it. Do you have a favorite? I have to ask now. That's actually one of them. Uh, mine is probably Pine Ricky, okay. uh, which is lemon, lime, pine, and the pine is actually from Maine. Uh, we harvest it actually at my farm. Oh, cool. Uh, so there's a nice little local flair to that as well. So do you guys keep an eye on the sustainability part? It sounds like you get a lot of your ingredients from around here or stay in Maine, at least I hope. Absolutely. As much as possible. <laughs> That's it's, great. It's important to us to, to pull from where we are. I think we think that um, the drinks would be less meaningful, you know, if it was all sourced from from everywhere. So sustainability is important, local is important, fresh is important. Definitely. And I've heard that you guys kind of touch on this is a place that everybody can come to. You guys have this nice vibe going. It's very cozy. You invite everybody. But even your prices, I hear that 
are made so that everybody can enjoy one. Um, it's nothing too crazy that, that some places are in the city have. Yeah, that was really important to us. Uh, in fact, the name, Apre, Apre, however you'd like to pronounce it, those are the only two allowed. <laughs> um, Mike and I being ski buddies, we really love that, you know, that after ski environment where everybody goes to the bar and it really doesn't matter who you are or what you're doing or anything in life, you're all happy and it's like you went on this little mini vacation without yeah. really going anywhere. Yeah, definitely. It's like a staycation. <laughs> That's so good. I think it should, the space should be egalitarian. Everybody should feel safe. Everybody should feel welcome. You know, it, we wanted it to be comfortable and interesting and it really isn't for only folks who can afford, you know, the best of the best. It's for folks who want to try something new and have a nice time and maybe meet new people. Definitely. So speaking of, you guys hold some events here. I see that your bar is painted pink. Could you tell me a little bit more about the efforts you guys are doing? You guys are holding a month-long uh, charity event, it sounds like. Mm. Please. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, uh, we are. Uh, from the beginning, we always had a desire to involve the community and fundraising and whatever we can do to help, right? Um, this month in particular, we are doing a benefit for Foundation for Love, which is a, an organization that uh, helps patients going through tr cancer treatment in a variety of different ways. So we've not just painted the bar pink, but we did a special release flavor, a uh, raspberry black tea with a nice bright pink can and some you know, logos and verbiage around what the foundation does. So uh, in addition to that, that's bringing in money for them this month. We're also doing a, uh, what do we call cap, it? We're doing an end cap silent auction okay. to raise additional funds for this really wonderful nonprofit. They work with New England cancer specialists. They give back um, you know, to folks and really contribute to quality of life in some really trying times. I think mean, cancer touches all of us. So. Um, a month-long initiative with an end party. We're going to be um, sourcing items from our community and other like-minded businesses and raising more money for these really wonderful folks who spend their time um, giving back as much as possible. That's super awesome to hear. I mean, the involvement in the community, I think, is very important and makes you guys unique almost, makes you stand out a bit more. Um, where do you guys draw inspiration from that? I mean, how do you choose what charities to do, you know, how to fundraise and all that? Do you guys have a coordinator or anything that helps? We do not have a coordinator. I think for us, please jump in. Um, I think for us, we are passionate people. Um, and if we could give to everything at once, we would, we would try. Um, <laughs> but for us, I think it is about uh, picking, picking charities in a strategic fashion that allow us to give back as much as possible um, with kind of what's on our mind. So last April for Earth Day, we partnered with Portland Trails. Um, you know, Ryan's a skier, I'm a skier, Mike is a skier. Uh, conservation is hugely important to us. The beauty of Maine is hugely important to us. So we partnered with Portland Trails, uh, which is a nonprofit that manages over 70, I think, miles, maybe acres, of trail space in the greater Portland area. Wow. Um, they're wonderful people, and it's something that we wanted to do to raise money where we could. Um, so. I think we take it on a case-by-case -case basis, but for the most part, it's what is meaningful and happening to us right now. Definitely. Yeah, and I think it's probably a local connection, so we're, we're more likely to fall in line with people we know or that are in the neighborhood or around here rather than a, a big national organization in some way. I think we, we get a little more out of it in the fact that they can actually come here mm -hmm. and be a part of what's going on and help in those efforts as well. You yeah. see where the effort and the money goes, and you get to see the people who it impacts, and that's incredibly important to us. For sure, for sure. Well, that's amazing. I'm glad you guys are doing such great work. I mean, I really think it leaves an impact on Portland and helps you guys grow as a business. Um, I was just wondering, what do you guys seem to be wanting to do in the next few years? I mean, you guys have just started out. Sounds like you guys are pretty brand new, but making a year mark just as fast. Um, where do you think Opera is going to go in the next few years? So we have a lot of hopes and desires. Uh, it thankfully has been very successful so far. Uh, so that is important to us, sort of how do we, you know, keep this beautiful thing we've created here, uh, but also take that other places or you know whether that's the product going to other places or maybe mimicking you know this room in other places so uh, both of those are certainly on the table and and likely um, we've had great traction on not just the product but the experience of being here uh, so we think we would like to really leverage that and and go further with it definitely do you guys have any of your product uh, in grocery stores or anything around in Portland 
or can they only get it here? <laughs> we do a select amount of distribution in the Portland area for now. Okay. Um, but we do like to get out and we are outdoorsy people, so we're looking really hard at the mountains this winter. Oh. Um, you know, we think Opre is designed to go in tandem with outdoor recreation and an active lifestyle. Wherever you go, we want to go with you. So even though we're only a year and a half old, uh, we are trying to grow sustainably, organically. We're keeping it select for now. And we're realizing that we don't make enough product to suit um, the amount of folks who want it. So we're in the process of scaling up our production as much as humanly possible in order to really iterate those goals. But um, for now, we're partnered with some really wonderful places in Portland, folks who specialize in craft beverage, you know, RSVP has been wonderful. Bow Street has been wonderful, Hilltop Supret. So if you look, you can find you can find our product. But if you're looking for every release, this is a place to be. <laughs> this is a place to be, it sounds like. <laughs>
quite a few things from this original building. Oh, uh, wow. What you see now did not look like this. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of an ugly old plain industrial building. It was a tuna can. <laughs> it was a tuna can. I, I like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so the underside of the bar, which we've painted pink for this month, uh, is actually siding that was on the front of the building. Oh, cool. Uh, our stalls in the bathrooms were actually made from the garage doors that were removed and repurposed to be bathroom stalls. Nice. Uh, so there's a lot of that in the building. We've done a lot of kind of reuse and some use and things that were just on the property, honestly. Yeah, that's super cool. My friend and Susie, I think, had a real mind for making something that was just a little bit glamorous, a little bit more than what people were used to, but making sure that the design was sustainable and true to the integrity of the building itself. You know, the ceiling is really as is. Um, the frame of the building, except for the front here, is untouched. You know, the floors are the floors that were here. Um, so the idea was to build upon an existing and already wonderful and unique structure. What was the word we came up with? Industrial chic? Maybe. Industrial chic, yeah. industrial glamour. <laughs> Well, you've definitely done a successful job. I mean, I already want to curl up with a book. You said we were talking about it raining. Hopefully, you could hear it on the tin roof. So I heard you guys have something secretive about your can. There's a little secret aspect to it. Do you mind showing us what that is? So we don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but I will say design has been a huge uh, aspect of this whole project. So when we came out with our packaged product, we wanted to make sure it was super minimalist, really clean, but with like a, a subtle point of interest. So I won't tell you what it is, but if you look closely, every release we do has um, a little bit of like a hidden marker as if, uh, you know, kind of denoting uh, our, our, our subtlety, I guess people will say. Ryan, you have a thought? Yeah, I think uh, we won't let them know fully, but <laughs> if you look on every can, you may find a little something different each time. Very cool. Thank you guys so much for talking to me today. It was great to get to know you guys and to hear about this product. If you're ever in the Portland, Maine area, make sure you take Opry with you on your winter adventures.